Easy Tigers. I hope everyone's fine and dandy. Welcome back. First things first, I just want to big up the patrons. Thanks to you guys, I can bring you these videos and stay out the matrix and keep researching. So thank you very much. I appreciate every single one of you. And I hope you guys enjoy this video. So, let's go. And I've been speaking a lot about geopolymer. So I'm just going to mix it up. I will go back to that topic. But I just wanted to throw something else in there that I've been looking at. And, well, well, well. No pun intended. So we've been looking at cathedrals, churches, water, and all bits and pieces like that. So we're going to be examining a place called St. Patrick's Cathedral, which is situated in New York. Now, they had the renovation of millions and millions of pounds, and oh, we'll go into it. But I want you to tell me about this picture. What do you think this picture is, and what do you think is going on? I'll give you a minute. 1, 2, 3, 59, 60. There you go. So this is a geothermal diagram, and this is showing you that there is wells that have been dug out or bored out and they are extracting hot and cold water to accommodate the temperature above ground. Now they've been doing this in the cathedral and numerous places in New York underneath buildings but we're going to go into it and I'm going to show you what geothermal is and you're just going to knock your socks off. So let's go. Right, the basic principles is that you're extracting water from the earth. And in the winter time, you're pulling heat out of that to create heating for the building. And in the summer, you're pulling cooling out of that water and injecting the hot water back into the built earth. Architect Jeff Murphy explained, so it's giving you a higher basis of energy, whether it's cooling in the summer or heating in the winter. Murphy's firm, Murphy, Burnham and Buttrick, the cathedral's design team, worked with P.W. Grosser, we developed and repurposed the existing <laughs> infrastructure to harness clean, renewable power from the underground systems of wells. So it's very, very interesting, but we ain't going to stop there. There are very few structures that have geothermal heating plants in the Big Apple, so not much else gets down to the depths of these wells. Other institutions using geothermal technology include Union Theological Seminary, the Brooklyn Children's Museum, and the Queen's Botanical Garden. The cathedral's new plant will be able to generate 2.9 million BTUs per hour of air conditioning and 3.2 million BTUs per hour of heating, servicing a total of some 76,000 square feet in a 136-year-old church and adjacent buildings. And for those that don't know what BTU means, it's British Thermal Units, and it's a unit of heat. It is defined as the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one pound of water by one degree Fahrenheit, also part of the United States customary units. Heat is now known to be the equivalent to energy. And with that being said, I'm just going to show you again how many BTUs is 600 square foot. So as a general rule, about 20 BTUs of cooling are required per square foot of space. That means 12,000 BTU air conditioner room size is 600 foot. So this place is generating a ridiculous amount of BTUs for what it actually needs to heat that place up. And again, just to show you again, it will take a boiler 50 BTUs per square foot to heat interior space. So like, I'm just showing you this just to show you how much these guys are generating, but they're not even using it to, to power this place up. Like they're generating it, God knows what they're doing with it. But you don't need that much, like nearly 3 million BTUs an hour. <laughs> and obviously you can convert BTUs into watts. So we're going to look at St. Patrick's Church. But before we go to an article, I just want to say this. In mid-February, the Archdiocese of New York announced that the historical cathedral, which has undergone a $177 million renovation over the past four years, activated a geothermal plant to heat in the winter and cool in the summer. So it's funny how they didn't mention nothing when the work was being done, but they mentioned it when the work had been finished. In my eyes, it means that it's probably already there underneath. And it's probably, if you ask me, no way would it cost 177 million pounds to renovate or stick in some sort of air conditioning heating system inside the cathedral. You could probably get that done for half a million dollars. So God knows what these guys have been up to with 177 million. So let's see what it says about this then, shall we? So it says, the newest upgrade is 2,200 feet below the cathedral. So how did they do this 
So without, <laughs> this is unbelievable. So St. Patrick's Cathedral has dug deep to go green. The landmark has just fired up its new geothermal heating and cooling plants using renewable energy from 2,200 feet below the ground. The system is the largest of its kind in New York City, totally invisible to the cathedral's thousands of parishioners and passers-by. Ten wells sit along the north side of the church. Water in the wells is warmed by the earth's natural heat and sent, and sent into the plant underneath the parish house. The geothermal marvel was built as a part of a $177 million restoration of the cathedral, which included, wait for it, wait for it, a top to bottom cleaning. So the plant which went online last month replaced a more conventional system that dated to the 1980s and relied on Con Ed steam for heating. It also goes to say that this guy says, we're not willing to take risks with the technology we didn't have track record in Manhattan, says Jeffrey Murphy. But over the years, other large institutions, including the Union Theological Seminary in Morningside Heights and the General Theological Seminary in Chelsea, switched to geothermal plants. The Archdiocese decided to follow their lead. There are a couple of things that make it so perfect, said Murphy. There is virtually no impact of the system on the fabric of the cathedral. It took about nine months to drill the wells, said John Reiner, Vice President of the Geothermal Services. They were drilled deeper than anywhere else in the city and together with the 10 wells provided by far the greatest amount of heating and cooling capacity than any other city system, Reiner said. And in an, another new energy efficient feature was added to the cathedral. Sliding glass doors along the 5th Avenue that will allow a massive bronze portal to door to stay open with the loss of heat and air conditioning. So they're basically, right, I don't get it. So it took four years to do it, but it took nine months to drill the holes. Right? Yet they're generating so much heating that they can afford to leave the doors open in the winter. Now, do you not think that's a bit of a mick take? That they're just using all this energy, yet yeah, we're paying through the nose for it, yet they're getting their heating through the wells and they're using it that way, geothermal, and then leaving the doors open in the winter. Bit of a mickey take in my eyes. If you ask me, it sounds like a cover up story for reactivating a old world power plant that was already there. That's what I believe. And it's funny that these places are situated over what we call churches and cathedrals. And it's just backing up everything that I'm saying. So what is the crack with these old churches and cathedrals? Uh, and what, what, what date did they turn into a religious place of worship? Because to me it seems like they used to worship water back in the day. These are only my thoughts anyway. Let me know what you think. So just in the, the state of New York, there was five or six geothermal plants underneath these churches now this one here is actually a museum but god knows what happened to this museum like it's been reconstructed but look what they've been put there instead what a load of crap but you can clearly see that or, or, or guess that there's something underneath that now let's go to morning side this is actually called riverside church you see how, con how convenient morning side it's mental absolutely mental again these are this has got a geothermal power plant underneath it very old world buildings, hey? Now this is the one that was in Chelsea. Again, looking like a cathedral. Or a church. So, what has happened? Why have these churches and cathedrals, that's what we call them now, been turned into religious places? It's very strange. And who's the people in control to say, yeah, well hang on a minute. This is going to be this from now on. And this is how you're going to think. And you're not getting meant to know about this. So if you ask me, there's nothing new under the sun. And ask me again, I reckon if you dig down underneath these churches and cathedrals, you're going to come to wells, probably tapping into primary water. One other thing I'd like to add is, how many of these churches and cathedrals or monasteries or whatever you want to call them, how many of these have these power plants already underneath them, just waiting to be reactivated? Because I've been to a couple of cathedrals or churches around my area, They've all got pipe work coming from underneath it. Very suspect. We keep on moving. As dust is stairs, we keep on sleuthing. Who knows? All we've got is speculation, and all we have is opinions. And like I said, an opinion's just like an arsehole. Nine times out of ten, it's going to stink if you don't like it.
Right, well, I've probably bored you or knocked the socks off you, so let's have a Brucey bonus, shall we? Shall we, Squire? Right, let's go to Riverside County in California. Uh, someone sent this to me on the uh, Telegram group. It's why it's a very good group because it's just generating knowledge upon knowledge. Now, this seems to be a load of geopolymer that's been made, I, f I believe, in the 1920s. But it's all falling apart now. now. I've done a little bit of research for half hour and it seems like there's an ancient subterranean network underneath all of this. So what they've done is they've blocked it all up and then they've put all this really tacky geopolymer all over it. Now why would you go through the extent to do that? Now just look how poor the geopolymer is. Look at it. Cracking all over the place. It's got mesh in it. Really thin, hollow stuff. I mean, these... What are they, skin? What's happened here? <laughs> this is a really poor version of a geopolymer stone. In my eyes, it's probably about 10 mil thick. Obviously built not to last. But my questions are, why block up everything underneath and then build this prop on top? Because that's what it is, it's just a prop. We're literally walking around like a, a poorly built theatre. Like we're just walking around with rubbish props everywhere. Now they've left vents, so for some reason it's going to get used or they need to keep it ventilated down there for some reason. But there's also a catacombs under there as well. Managed to get some pictures, and it's very, very peculiar. Considering uh, America is not meant to be that old, well, we know how old it is. But look at this. This is underground. Like, why have they blocked this up? And this was meant to be the catacombs. So why is this all blocked up now? And then why did they build this prop on top? I digress. Everything around us is just fake. Clearly. Now I want to go to Blackpool Tower because so again. On the telegram group it's just generating knowledge like someone said that uh, up till 1926 blackpool tower was generating its own electricity now how would they be doing that was it from the ether or was it dynamos that's what i'd like to know because i'd like to uh, get to the bottom of this but there's hardly anything online but i only researched it for half hour So there you go, like what is going on here? And there used to be a river that run underneath this tower. Let me show you. Did you know the river Ribble probably once flowed out to sea where the tower now stands? It is clear that it previously flowed along a different route from its current course. And it's possible that the old course was along the northern edge of the Long Ridge Fell, reaching the sea near where the Blackpool Tower now stands. This hasn't been conclusively proved, but the fact that diamic, boulder, clay or tilt is found at depths in excess of 20 metres beneath the tower supports this theory. So, you had a river running underneath there to the sea, but they don't know. <laughs> you know, like, why would you say that? So, obviously there was a river running underneath it. So, how did they do it? Was it a dynamo that was getting the power? Did they have a, 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 a water wheel? in there generating power or was it up from the ether from the very top of it collecting from the ether but clearly this is some sort of old world generator or power station and it's just been repurposed as a tourist attraction just like everything turns into a nature reserve or a tourist attraction <laughs> so let me know your thoughts on that one it's quite interesting that we've noticed that now they're plotting up all these geothermal plants underneath cathedrals and churches which is very suspect you've got them blocking up tunnels in america and then building geopolymer block work on top of it and and stones to cover it up and obviously they're saying that blackpool tower used to generate its own electricity up until 1926 so the current world we're living in is just a load of cobblers the narrative is cobblers and it's a so anyway let me know what you think don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and all that jazz. And most important of all, one love. Ta-da!